Hi, my friends. My name is Lucia. As you may know, I have been a freelancer for almost a year, and I earned 13k during this year. Today, I will share with you the 10 lessons I learned from my first over 10k earnings and first year freelancing. I hope I can help my fellow freelancers. Hope you like this video. Let's get started now. First lesson I learned is that it takes time. Yes, freelancing takes time. My first 10k takes me almost a year and a lot of research, revisions, and building up my portfolio. I also noticed that on many internet articles and videos, it seems like a get-to-rich-quick scheme, but to my experience, it is not. The reality it is, it takes a lot of time to establish myself, to find my specialties, and building my portfolios online. At the same time, success on a freelancing career take a lot of factors. For example, your reputation, your portfolio, your communication, and your marketing, and how you build up your specialty and how you locate yourself in the market. It requires consistent hard work, researching the market, also do good communication and client retainment, the willingness to learn and grow during the process. We will also face very different challenges from the office work, such as we need to research the client, research the market, also do good client communication. Those are the new things to learn during your first year freelancing. Lesson two is. The people, I mean the client, may have very different opinions to your work. Don't take it very personally. I feel that freelancing work is very different from the ordinary office work. From freelancing, I choose my client, I deliver the work, and I do the customer care. So when they give me negative reviews, it's very easy for me to feel very personal. It feels like I am useless. Many times I try to tell myself, no, it's not. But to be honest, I'm constantly thinking so. I want to say it's very important not to take these negative feedbacks to ourselves, but instead we can take it as an opportunity to learn. Not only we can learn about how we treat different client and how to build up our portfolio well and how to deliver the work well. At the same times, we can also think about who are the appropriate client. We should take on board that we can serve well and both of us being happy. Having the negative review is also okay. You know, everybody have different opinions and preference. I had done over 250 orders. Most of them are positive review, but I also get five to ten very negative reviews. It's neither my fault nor their fault. When we face this situation, we can first observe it to see are there any things we should improve. So later on, we can have more strategies to find the appropriate client that's suitable to our business. The lesson three I learned is prioritize self-care and avoid burnout. As a new freelancer, as myself, I had been constantly caught up by the excitement of starting a small business and also the challenges from this business. It's very easy for me to work. Over time, or constantly think about the work thing, or work on the weekend. I don't want to say freelancing is hard, but it's very demanding. So that means it's very essential for us to avoid burnout. For example, we should organize our daily life, take regular breaks, set boundaries with the client, set the appropriate time schedule, and get a weekend offs. Also, prioritize self care. And have more communication and people interactions outside of work. Taking breaks is very, very important. It's not only avoid burnout, but at the same time, to increase the productivity and creativity, and it's also retain a sharp eye to the market. In the long run, this is very important for the business success. We should definitely aim at creating a sustainable and fulfilling freelancing career for ourselves, rather than burnout, rather than working a lot. Lesson four is do more tracking. For example, tracking the hours, tracking the working process, and the money. This is very essential to get organized. For example, we can organize the client and the project better. Learn how each project takes time. We can make good estimation afterwards and organize our work better. Setting realistic goals. 
and maintain a realistic schedule to get each project on time. Additionally, tracking our finance, tracking our hourly pay and profit, and manage the expense more effectively. Using this information, using this data, we can better maintain a sustainable business and make informed decisions in the future. For example, we can learn about how many work hours we need to work to make an ideal life and what are the most ideal projects to take during the freelancy. Let's talk about lesson five is to take care of the marketing and pricing. Those are as important as our work itself. Your yeah, freelancing is different from employment. It's not only getting the work done, but also do good marketing and good pricing and good market research. For example, we need to utilize the marketing skills better to get a stable flow of the client. We can utilize more marketing channels, for example, cold calling, cold emailing, and local marketing using social media, LinkedIn, writing blogs, using freelancer platforms, and etc. And another thing, pricing. Pricing is also essential. It's also a new thing to learn as a new freelancer, which not only determines the income, but you use the right pricing, it can attract the right customer. The best way is to research market and set competitive price based on your expertise and competitors. Also to regularly adjusting and reaccessing your marketing strategy and pricing so it can keep more relevant to the market, getting profitable on the market. I also admit that this is one of the mistakes I had made from the beginning that I focus on the work quality itself rather than the marketing strategy and pricing. But later on, I find this is not a good thing because we may attract the client that not very suitable. This may cause that we waste each other's time and energy. It becomes very important to find who we are in the market and find the right people, the right counterparties to service. By this, you can establish the solid reputation and have the long-term success. The lesson six is to summarize, re-ramp, and most importantly, do self-promotion. Similar to the last lesson, it's very important to access our work, re-ramp our work, find out the areas of improvement, and find out what works well so we can go into that direction more. Also, research the market constantly and adjust ourselves to meet the constant change of the market. Another thing is to do self-promotion. It's different from working in the office, working with a leader. Now, nobody will give us a promotion. Nobody will access our work. So we need to do it ourselves to regularly access our process, to make a promotion or make a twist of our work. This can also be a good thing that we can do self-promotion more frequently than in the office. And we can have more freedom to go to the area we really want to work. The lesson seven is to use some templates can be involved in many areas. For example, the communications, the proposals we send to others, the contract, the invoice and emails and the way we deliver our results. Creating some templates can save a lot of time and it's also build a standard process and a stable result for each client which saves time to ensure the consistency and the professionalism of our results. Not only to the client, we can also build some frameworks to our own working process. For example, using some project management software and techniques, we can identify the steps doing each project, setting realistic timelines, and also breaking down the tasks into small parts, setting up principles and frameworks to communicate the process to the client properly. By using the template and creating more effective process, we can create a more organized, professional, and efficient freelance business. The lesson eight is to diversify our income source. This has been a pretty painful experience to myself. At the beginning, I only use one freelancing platform, but at one time, it seems like there are some rotation and the algorithm change, so I lose all my impressions suddenly. At the beginning, I feel so angry. Why are you taking all the works from me? 
But later, I find out they don't have the responsibility to secure my business. But I need to take the full responsibility to the fluctuations. In short, find a way to get a stable income source. We can be better diversifying our income source. For example, we can maintain a good communication, a good relationship with our former client. And we need to diversify our source of income. For example, using different marketing strategies, not only depending on the platform, but we do active marketing such as social media on LinkedIn, do more email marketing and local marketing. We can also expand our work into different industries and different niches. For example, we are not only providing service to one client, but also we build digital product and sell it online. Or you can start a social media channel. Those are the ways I can think of to diversify the income. So do access the income streams and avoid putting all the eggs in one bucket. I want to say the market is fluctuating and yeah, this is my experience. I can lose all the clients and all the source just very quickly. So keep a healthy balance where you find your clients, where you find your income source. This can definitely help us to be more profitable and sustainable in the long run. The number nine, I want to say, I don't know what my specialty is. I learn about it by doing instead of thinking. It takes time to learn about the market and the specialties. At the beginning of my journey, I don't know about it. So I post different gigs in different industries. I do writing, translation, design, video, and finance and marketing. By taking constant action and the hand-down experience, I can finally feel what is the best area I can work with. While I don't deny that searching, planning is very important, but at the same time, it's also important to get our feet wet, to feel how is the work in different industries, how is the market in different industries, are we attractive in different industries. As I said, I work in very different categories for almost half a year, and after that, I get an idea on this and this industry are better than those ones, so I can be more focused to the industries I like and I can work better in which not only takes thinking, but also doing, but also real interacting with the real client, you will definitely get a more solid solution. At the same time, by the real working as a freelancer, we can learn how to be a better worker in the industry. Whichever industry you focus in, this can be a very interchangeable knowledge. For example, do market research and how to communicate with people. So even if you don't feel 100% ready, I highly recommend you to get your feet wet, to feel about it, to learn from the client and learn from other freelancers, learn from your peers that definitely help. The lesson 10, this is the last lesson. I want to say stay calm and always do the good work. As we previously say, we always meet different clients. They have different opinions and different requirements. Sometimes I feel so frustrated and angry. People are different. The market fluctuate, but not our heart. I can totally get it. Sometimes we can feel very frustrated, tired and angry, so stressful that I don't want to do the work. Yeah, it happens sometimes. As the freelancer, we are our business. So my trick is when I'm doing the work, I try to forget the emotion for a while and focus on the problem solving. I also understand that sometimes giving up one client and go on, this is the best step. So you don't need to feel very frustrated about it. We can definitely make the best decision to your scenario and go on and continue doing the good work as always. Maintaining the calm attitude, we can have some small up and downs during the process, but the whole process can be a rising trend with us continuously doing the good work. So please feel free to let me know how you think about it. Do you have any tips and lessons to share? Please comment down below. If you like this video, please feel free to give me a like and subscribe. Also, let me know so I can make more of the similar content. Thank you all for listening and I will see you again soon.